Have you been in any great gyms you'd like to great finally gyms? remember? Sure. You, I was reading in your book, you and I were one year apart visiting Gold's Gym on Santa, in Santa Monica on 2nd Street there. Oh, okay. Uh, I was there in 78. Okay. And the day I was there, uh, Bill Grant was doing a, a photo session that day. Oh, okay. And I went in there and squatted and did all my stuff and just kind of hid in the corner and watched all this stuff going. Because at the time, that was a great place to train. It was just well, a, I told you why. Place. I think I said in the book, Robbie Robinson came over because right. I cl was cleaning. I was doing right. cleans. And he said, that's what a young guy like you needs, cleans. And uh, that's why, and I'm sure, I'm sure if you sat him down right now, do you remember this? Nope. Oh, probably not. Of course not. He's but talked changed, to some people. changed my life. Yeah. You know. And, uh, well, yeah, I would say, now, I also went to the World Gym that day, and that, before it all became. So I didn't know there was a World Gym there. I didn't know anything about the World I'd heard about the Golds and read Joe, about it in the Joe magazine. Joe Golds opened the World Gym because he had sold his name. So, I think at the time I was there, Grimkowski yeah. had just bought yeah. the Golds yeah. in, in, uh, in Santa Monica, exactly. and then Joe had moved up and started. World. What I thought was world, yeah, right. okay. I'm pretty sure. That. I think that's the case, yes. And then, so those are. I mean, <clears throat> that was, those places were great for the characters, but the sports palace there on Valencia, with uh, you know, you'd be. I mean, I'd be doing a workout when Dick was out of town, and you know, you'd be getting heckled by Bruce Wilhelm and Mario Martinez and Ken Clark and all mm -hmm. those great Kevin Winter and all those great lifters, and of course Dick's gym, um, Pacifica Barbell Club, which was a back room with one platform, three Olympic bars. <laughs> I mean, that shaped my life. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> of course, a lot of college you know, b uh, gyms and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. There's a place I work out now called Park Road Fitness in Burlingame. There's, it's a nice place. It kind of reminds me of the way things used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of there's a lot of, there's stuff you can get in there right. and go, okay. This we're here to work out. You can see it. You know, the sleds. You know, you can see it. Um, the gym I worked at last couple of years at uh, the school, Juan Diego Catholic High School, that was a phenomenal facility. But you know, the, the problem with gyms <laughs> and uh, is when I walk in, I should know what the mission of the place is. When you walked into my right. place at, at, at Juan Diego, you saw five platforms, Five squat racks, five benches. All the benches and squat racks had chains on them, because that's where I store the chains. You know, the kind that collar on. You saw 113 kettlebells. You saw pull-up bars. You saw sleds. You saw hurdles. A place to sprint. What do we do in our gym? Well, you knew, just Medium. by walking in. And then all you need, you know, then there's so the the you, then the quality of the uh, what makes a great gym too is the kind of the air. The Stimmung in, in German, the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. of that. Sure. You, you can kind of there's an electricity. There's like right. you walk in there and it's like, okay. And and, and even if no one's lifting weights, <clears throat> you should have a sense of what's oh, going. What on. happened before? Yeah. Right. You, what you what goes in, on every yeah, day? Right. You, you goes on every day. And and that's and that's it's it's so odd. And it doesn't necessarily matter what's on the walls or the little list of rules. You know, I mean, you know what you're in for. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what about sports you've competed in? Uh, you've had a rather broad exposure to different levels of athletics. Oh, yeah. How many different sports have you competed in? <clears throat> okay, this is not the essence of it. This is straight up uh, football uh, for a very fine high school in California. Okay, I wrestled in high school. I was the uh, keeper in soccer. I wasn't very good. We played uh, uh, floor hockey. I loved floor hockey. It's uh, where you run around and you play hockey. One of my favorite sports. I, I, yeah. I have to say that. I forgot about it. Uh, did my powerlifting meet, so right. i got to get throw that one in. Right. Um, of course, I threw in track and field. If you, it depends how you want to count it. Um, that, uh, the discus, the shot, the javelin, the hammer, and the weights. Of course, the ultra weights. Highland Games. Uh, a specific sport called weight pentathlon, which is uh, where you throw the five great track events and, uh, really? in, in one day. I love that. It's, I've it's never good. heard of that. Is that yeah. where is that contested? Oh, it's all. It, it, it's it's it. There is. You have to. You kind of have to go someplace. It's right. It's uh, so you start off. Is that a, within the track and field community? It takes yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. But you you throw the hammer, the shot, the discus, the javelin, and the thirty-five pound weight right. in one day, and then it, it's 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 done. 
Oh, I mentioned Highland Games. Uh, flag football I was on a very fine team. I was the oldest guy in the league by almost 20. <laughs> Dan, you can't camp flag football. But I was the oldest guy in the league by 20 <laughs> years. I loved it. I loved it. Oh, I forgot. I played basketball as a kid. Right. Jeez. Um, well, that's quite a broad, a few others quite too. A broad exposure. Yeah. Oh, Have you ever done an endurance at sport of yeah, any I, think, I hurt my back. Uh, I tweaked my back. Picking up a thing called a typewriter. I, the, the nice lady asked me to odd shape to that. Yeah, asked me to pick it up. So she had her desk here, and I went like this and went like that, Ugh. and I heard that little, yeah. you know, and yeah. that was it. So I went to this chiropractor, and he said, you know, what you ought to do, you know, you've got this, you hurt yourself, so why don't you do bilateral swimming, get yourself into shape by, by that's the freestyle where you breathe on mm -hmm. both sides. He said that'll really. Give you some exercise, and he goes. You might as well learn a bike. To, you know, ride some bikes. You know, you know, get yourself, get yourself back into kind of good general shape. Uh, this will come around in no time, but just get yourself into shape. So I figured, well, if I was going to do bilateral swimming, and if I was going to do uh, bicycling, well, why don't I go for a run and do a triathlon? So I did a triathlon. <laughs> did you? Early when triathlons first were coming. How long in. ago was it? Oh, I think it was '85, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But. Uh, I did uh, very well in the swim, and I did very well in the run, but triathlons are won by the bicyclists. I, they, really? These guys are all tricked out. And, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I did a couple, they're called sprint triathlons. I did, I did probably probably three, four, or five of them. Yeah, wow. I enjoyed them. I did enjoy them. Yeah. Well, what recreational stuff have you done? You, bowl! Do you like the bowl? like the bowl. Do you ski? I've skied. I've cross-country skied. Uh, I like all that stuff. Do you, you ever <clears throat> coach any any? Skiers doing skiing or I, anything like that. I have worked with some winter athletes. Yeah, it's it's a little different. Yeah. Tell me about winter athletes. Uh, Zach, don't take this wrong. They tend to be uh, rather rich. They tend to be, uh, you know, and Josh, don't take this wrong. Uh, they tend to be and guys. Eva, don't, don't take, take this wrong. wrong. They tend to be people who can party quite a bit and still compete. Right. Whereas in my sports, right. it's. You can't, you know, I don't think you'd be smoking a bong before you do a snatch. <laughs> <laughs> Which Star tells me. Oh, I, uh, people uh, did, yeah. Oh, my God. Star, Star tells me of a, of, a, of a junior nationals he was at where one of the guys was on acid. I bet you I know who it was. In the I bet you in California. I, I don't know. I don't remember the yeah. story. But uh, on acid. Now, that's, that requires some. Mastery of your focus, doesn't it? You're going to snatch and clean it. So my, my issue with, the, and also the winter athlete, there's so few, so you don't have right. all that pure competition. If you, well, they're concentrated in a few areas. Yeah. They're they're extremely geographically dependent yeah, yeah. on. I mean, we don't do that here. But if yeah, yeah. And, but if you and have a guy who's from the NBA, you 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 know that he's at the highest rung in that sport. Right. Right. That there's nobody better than the NBA basketball player, but I always wonder, you know, if we took Winter Olympics like as we made a national, we're going to be the greatest Winter Olympic country ever. To, we're going to spend three trillion dollars making. We're going to start in the third grade. Every single American is going to learn to skate and ski. You would see the the, the, the look of our national cha teams in the Winter Olympics changed radically. But uh, yeah. Oh, what would they? What, well, you, you wouldn't see as Tell many. Me. You might not see as many from Colorado. Right. <laughs> you know, it might. It might change a little bit. <laughs> oh, I think I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I guess you're. I've had a lot of problems training cyclists myself. Okay. Because see. they because they will not do anything except ride their bike. Dave, this They're is for you. Yeah, we're working with this guy named Dave. Great guy. Co totally locked up. You know, to breaks his collarbone. Re-injures it on what a training ride, mm -hmm. you know. So it is a hard thing. <clears throat> Cyclists get very addicted. Of course, it's it's like our Nautilus. I mean, every time I tweak a piece of equipment, if, if a new thing comes out to make my bike faster, it's a two thousand dollar gear, mm -hmm. but it's two ounces lighter. Mm -hmm. The bike got to have it. Got to have it. Got to have it. Gotta Gears have it. and and mm -hmm. and the shiny clothing and exactly. helmets and stuff like so, that. But. Let them try to do something off the bike to improve their performance on that, and we'll do it. Mark Twight actually has a lot of success with it, and it's funny because what's great about well, bikes he's probably dealing with mountain bikers. Uh, mountain, one guy's mountain. road racer, but yeah, one thing. I mean, they've been very helpful for me because universally, 
uh, bikers have terrible, okay, they, they need to work the rhomboids. Mm -hmm. They need to open this up. They have terrible hip flexors. They need to open the hips up. All kinds of things are tight. They need They're, to do front squats. Lumbar flexion is the and, order of the day. And yeah. they need to do pull-ups. So that's great because every person I know needs to work their rhomboids, open up their hip flexors, increase their front squat, and do more pull-ups. And that's the... Right. That's my okay. That's my million dollar assessment. I mean, that's everybody needs those. That I mean, pretty much applies, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's over. Uh, send me the money. Yeah, send me the money. <laughs> <laughs> so there's your million dollar assessment. And what was good about the ones that Mark is working with is that he now has a series of tests that he shows them. Okay, not only for your long term, and we'll call it health, but we'll call it your long term ability to be a normal human being after you retire from this obsession. It's going to make yeah. you a better cyclist. Right. You know, constantly being like this, uh, working with this young uh, distance runner yesterday, you know, he's having all kinds of issues, but he's just, he's like this. So he's running down. Well, I can make you run faster simply by making heart to the heavens. Right. Now just your hips open up. Your, he says, my hips are always tight. Because it changes tight. your hip mechanics. Yeah. Your my hip hips are always tight after I run. I go, no, it wasn't, but it's not your hips. It's up here. And that's the one thing. That's the one thing. The longer you're in this stuff, the more you start to realize that there's the problem, but let's look elsewhere for a minute first. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody in the team, okay, the boy dropped the ball in the end zone, we lost the game. Okay, grandma knows that. My job is to come in and fix it. I have to fix that. I can't keep letting him drop the ball in the end mm -hmm. zone. So what happened? So let's reverse engineer, you know, using Pavel's great phrase, what happened? Mm -hmm. So you're coming in with all these issues. I mean, your hips are tight, but it's because you know, you, you, your, your chair at work is terrible, you're, you're the vehicle you drive. Let's work on some other things. Right. So that's, that's, where, that's where experience really pays off. The, the more people you can work with, the more you, your eyes stop. You know, grandma, okay, if I see this sticking out here, everybody knows that's a problem. Well, my job is to look outside to see if we could have, A, prevent it for, so I don't hurt him in the future, or B, we'll be able to get you back going really quick because we're going to loosen that up. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I do things.